So and already I have sent you a few written notes for that first introduction course. Uh, later I will give you printed notes also. But you follow that you so that when you are at home you can just read and go through these notes. Okay, right? So again yes, to brush up to brush up I'm just going. So in the last class. Just I will brush up the points what I have told you, which is also in the notes. We just follow that notes also. So you know what is soil chemistry? Basically, chemistry you have studied in your PUC. So chemistry means study of chemical reactions, you know. So similarly, application of that chemistry in the soil is referred to as soil chemistry. Or in other words, soil chemistry is a study of various characteristics of soil that is affected by mineral composition, organic matter and other environmental factors. So you know what is soil made up of? Soil is made up of inorganic material and organic material. So these two in coordination with environmental factor affects the chemistry of the soil. So who was the first scientist who put forth this chemistry of soil? So it was a scientist by name Thomas Way. So he belonged to the Royal Agriculture Society in England. So he conducted various experiments in the soils to study the various exchange reactions between different ions in the soil or the nutrients in the soil. And therefore, he felt that soil colloids have an important role in the chemistry of the soil. Therefore, he was called as father of soil chemistry. So you should know who is the father of soil chemistry. It is J. Thomas Way from Royal Agriculture Society in England. So you know what is soil chemistry and who is the father of soil chemistry. Next, coming to the scope of studying soil science. So why do we have to study soil science? For example, now why did you take up BSc Agriculture? You feel that there is a lot of scope in getting jobs either into Research units, academic units, privates, or corporate sector. You know the scope. That is, agriculture has a very wide scope in providing career and jobs for students of BSc agriculture. Similarly, what is the scope of studying soil science? After studying soil science, what one has, can achieve or what one can pursue in his career? So there are different branches of soil science. So scope of soil science is related to different branches of soil science. So the different branches of soil science are like soil physics, soil chemistry, soil fertility, soil microbiology, soil conservation, soil technology, soil taxonomy, pedology, etc. So mainly there are around six branches of soil science, which you should know has a very wide scope in managing the soil fertility of the soil and improving the crop production and ultimately the yield of crops. So firstly, coming to what is soil science in the fundamental course itself, you might have studied, it is a Science dealing with the soil as a natural resource on the surface of the earth, which includes pedology. You might have studied the soil formation processes after weathering of rocks and minerals. Then you might have studied the classification of soil, the mapping, the remote sensing aspects, the soil survey aspects. So soil science is a science which deals with study of soil genesis, classification, mapping, 
the physical chemical biology and fertility properties of soil and in turn their relationship to plant growth and development and ultimately influencing the crop production that is soil science what do you mean by soil fertility soil fertile you say soil is fertile soil is infertile we say there are fertile soils in the gangetic plains infertile soils in the desert area so what is the difference between fertile soils and infertile soils soil fertility refers to the ability of the soil to supply all the essential nutrients to the crop for growth and development so if a soil has all the nutrients required by the plants then we say that soil is fertile for example desert soil will not have all the nutrients in the soil we say it is poor fertility or infertile so soil fertility is defined as the so is soil chemistry essential for us to study so a knowledge of soil chemistry is required to know the availability of nutrients in the plants in different forms whether they are in sufficient forms deficient forms then based on the availability we can see if the to if there is excess to avoid toxicities then to whether that is utilized by the microbes then also it improves the physical conditions of the soil improves the stability of the soil then also we can know see for example soil may have calcium magnesium various heavy metals in that soil which may corrode the pipes present in the soil or the cement in the soil and it may cause pollution in soil and water therefore by studying all these factors or characteristics we can know the effect of reactions on these particle surfaces that is on the clay colloid of the soil or on the humus that is organic colloid present in the soil so all these reactions takes place on the surface of the colloid colloid there are two types of colloids organic colloid in organic colloid you should know this because they will be asked in your objective questions dash and dash are colloids present in the soil so clay and humus are the colloids present in the soil clay is referred to as inorganic colloid humus is referred to as organic colloid in the soil so these colloids are considered as the seat of chemical reactions taking place in the soil or it is considered as the most chemically active portion of the soil you should remember all chemistry happens on the surface of colloids that is clay and humus not sand or silt you know soil is made up of sand silt and clay among these three particles which part is the most chemically active seat for chemical reaction means which clay which particle will you say among sand silt and clay clay particle fine so you should remember that clay is very important for the chemical reactions to take place then next uh, that is soil chemistry coming to the branch of soil physics you already studied physics in the pc so <coughs> application of those physics principles in the soils is referred to as soil physics in other words where we study the physical properties of the soil or in other words study of mechanical behavior of the soil is referred to as soil physics which involves 
like soil structure, soil texture, water holding capacity, bulk density, porosity, then uh, hydraulic conductivity, all these will be the force, how water moves, soil water potential. Uh, so what forces involved there, how water is conducted through the soil. So all these aspects are studied in soil physics, that even soil temperature, soil aeration, etc. So soil physics is the science which studies the mechanical behavior of the soil or physical properties of the soil. Next, coming to soil microbiology. You know the word microbiology means study of microbes in the soil. So what does these microorganisms do in the soil? <coughs> Without microbes, the soil is not having life. Only if microorganisms are present in the soil, we say the soil is living. And what role does microorganisms have in the soil? The microorganisms helps in various chemical reactions in releasing the nutrients for crop uptake. For example, say we add organic matter to the soil, we add fertilizer to the soil, we add manure to the soil. How do you think the nutrients present in these substances are released for plant uptake? It is the microbes which attack the manure or the fertilizers for source of food and later decompose those substances and helps in releasing the nutrients for crop uptake. That process is called as mineralization. So microbes have a very important role in transformation of the nutrients and making the nutrients available for crop uptake. So in soil microbiology, this, it is a study of microorganism, its population classification and its role in nutrient transformation. Then coming to the another branch of science, <coughs> that is soil conservation. So we know we have seen <coughs> In most of the areas, and these days they say soil is lost. How is soil lost? <coughs> by erosion, different types of erosion. Then by, uh, we say it is uh, degraded because of excess use of fertilizers, agrochemicals, heavy rainfall. There is soil loss. So we need to protect the soil or manage the soil from getting lost. That is soil conservation. So conserving the soil. So soil conservation deals with the protection of soil against physical loss by erosion or against chemical deterioration. That is excessive loss of nutrients, either natural or by artificial means. So soil conservation is basically studied by the agriculture engineering people. Or do you say soil engineering? The ag agriculture engineering students will study this more detailedly because the techniques involved in conserving the soil is by contrabanding and various other processes which is related to engineering technology. So soil conservation or sometimes it is called as soil technology also. Then pedology, pedology you have studied in your fundamental soil science course, which deals with genesis, survey and classification. So you already have studied about parent material, the rocks, the minerals, the silicates, the <clears throat> phosphates, the different types of classification of minerals, form formulas. You know that soils are formed from that type of rock forms that like for example, Acid soils are from, from acidic rock, basic soils are from basic rock. So acidic soils are from granite rock means it will have acidic salts or ions in them. So your pedology deals with genesis, survey and classification. So all these branches of soil science provides a wide scope 
in studying soil science, which finally is helpful for this doctor to plan his research work and to study various issues related to soil science. And ultimately, it is going to help the farmers by identifying the issues and suggesting appropriate management practices. So that is the wide scope of soil science. So next, coming to Next, coming to the components of soil which contribute to soil chemistry. So you already have your fundamentals of soil science, the volume composition of soil, the pie chart, the pie chart which consists of 45% of mineral matter, 5% of organic matter, 25% of soil layer, 25% of soil water. So this pie chart constitutes the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gaseous phase. So soil is made up of inorganic components and organic components. So inorganic components include the solid mineral matter, that is your rocks and minerals, which further bro broken down into sand, silt and clay. So this makes up the solid phase. <laughs> <coughs> and this minerals are the substances which have the nutrient ions in them, for example, Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, copper. All these minerals present in the earth's surface are got from the inorganic component of the soil, that is rocks and minerals. Coming to the second part, that is organic matter, which is made up of the freshly added organic matter partially decomposed organic matter, completely decomposed organic matter, that is humus. So these also have nutrients in them, like carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, amino acids, waxes, tannins, etc. So these both are very important components for soil chemistry to happen. So both are solid phase. So how do you think the nutrients present in the solid and in the organic and the inorganic come into solution only by presence of water? So the water present in the soil helps in dissolving these nutrients and form the soil solution the soil solution has nutrients in them which are made available for crop uptake. Then we have the uh, soil in the solid phase that is rocks minerals. Then we also have, I said, sand, silt, and clay. They are the secondary minerals formed after weathering of the primary minerals. So among these three, sand, silt, and clay, already you told me that clay is the important part of the soil chemistry because most of the reactions take place on the clay particle. <coughs> <coughs> because clay is a charged particle. Uh, sand and silt do not have charges. So clay is considered as a Again, seat of exchange of ions. So coming to the next portion of the soil, you know, inorganic, you know, organic. The next soil pores, what role does soil pore have in soil chemistry? Soil pore means it, it is filled with either air water or and water. Yes. 
it is filled with air or water so water for dissolving the nutrients and aeration is also required for various oxidation reduction reactions to take place it's required for the microorganisms for its respiration for acting on the various <clears throat> components of the soil so this air is present in two type of pores in the soil that is micropores and micropores <clears throat> so here the air is filled in these pores from the atmosphere once water is removed from the pores air gets rushed into the pores where in the air is filled which helps in drainage also so majorly macro pores the bigger size pores helps in transporting the molecules and substances in and out of the micro pores whereas micro pores are present within the aggregates wherein the capillary movement of water take place and in turn the movement of nutrient ions to the plant so that is a major role of soil pores then coming to soil water already i told you water is essential for all living organisms including plants animals microbes human beings and it is present within the soil profile and it partially fills up the micropore micropores in an ideal soil that that is why we say it has 25% water soil has 25% water then when leaching occurs see when rainfall occurs fine water gets filled in the pores and it moves down the soil profile leaching of soil occurs so while the water moves down into the soil profile it will carry along with it the ions or salts present on the surface of the soil into deeper layers that is into the lower horizon causing the soil to become more oxidized in other soil horizons that may is sometimes we say soil water moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration in case the zoom switch off again we will try to log in okay it is showing uh, out of time so along when the water is moving down it also leaches out certain amount of nutrients into the ground water table so during this process forces of adhesion and cohesion takes place adhesion means attraction of different molecules that is for example soil and water water gets added to the soil means it get attracted that is addition cohesion means attraction between two similar molecules water and water or soil and soil so water is responsible for example paddy soils you know that paddy soils are flooded soils so in flooded soils there is poor aeration no oxygen in that so the chemistry of submerged soils is different reduction reactions takes place there for most of the nutrient ions whereas in your arid or dry soils aeration is more so the chemistry is different in arid soils because of presence of air oxidation reactions takes place so that is the important of soil water and in relation to soil air soil aeration both are indirectly related to each other and coming to the soil air the composition the atmospheric air contains three main gases namely oxygen carbon and nitrogen in the atmosphere oxygen is 90% nitrogen 79% carbon dioxide 0.15 to 0.65% by volume carbon dioxide increases with increase in depth of the soil because of decomposition of accumulated organic matter and presence of plant roots in abundance that is why soils will have more organic carbon compared to the atmospheric carbon you should remember this carbon is more in soil compared to air whereas nitrogen is more in atmosphere compared to soil so the presence of oxygen in the soil is important because it helps in 
breaking down insoluble mass into soluble minerals and organic humification air in the soil is composed of gases that are present in the atmosphere but not in the same proportions and all these gases facilitate or help in chemical reactions that are brought about by micro organisms so accumulation of the soluble nutrients in the soil <clears throat> makes it more productive if soil is deficient in oxygen microbial activity slow down if oxygen is absent important factors controlling the soil air are atmosphere temperature pressure wind and rainfall so that is soil importance of soil air in soil chemistry oxidation reduction reactions next organic matter is already mentioned end product of organic matter decomposition is humus humus is called as organic colloid it is a charged particle again which has c h o s n carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur and it is mainly made up of carbohydrates proteins organic acids phosphoric acids lipids etc and that end product of organic matter called as humus is a dynamic product means it keeps changing because of its oxidation reduction and hydrolysis and humus is important in soil chemistry because it helps in buffering capacity cation exchange capacity anion exchange capacity various sorption adsorption reactions in the soils in the chemistry of problematic soils maintaining the cn ratio so <coughs> the whole volume composition of soil which is made up of inorganic components and organic components along with water and air has a very important role in soil chemistry therefore we say soil chemistry revolves around all the organic and inorganic components of soil in relation to soil air and water so it's clear you know what is soil chemistry then you know what are the important components which has a role in soil chemistry the volume composition of soil which helps in soil chemistry the different branches of soil which contributes to the scope of soil science this much is clear clear yes or no yes ma'am okay fine now yes, coming to now coming to the important aspect of how chemistry happens in the soil you know to you need to know you know that it happens in colloidal particles that is clay or humus so now coming to what is soil colloid so you have heard of the term colloid colloid means blue like substance some sticky substance you might have heard uh, glue is colloid it sticks to your hand and it is size is small we say less than 1 micrometer or 0.01 micrometer so similarly like that in the soil clay is considered as colloid humus is considered as colloid then what is colloid so the colloidal state refers to <clears throat> two phase system for exam exam first let me tell you what are the example of colloids at home you might have seen curds you might have seen cheese you might have seen milk so when this curd milk uh, becomes curd when you remove uh, butter and uh, milk from that when we boil also we get that creamy layer that is cheese so that is a colloid means it will not completely dissolve in the medium so that is a colloid so means to say it has a dispersed phase and a dispersed medium so colloid is referred to as a two phase system in which one material 
in a very finely divided state is dispersed through the second material. So that is colloidal state. Examples of colloidal state are milk and cheese, clouds and fog. You, in the environment, you might have seen clouds. Then you would see fog. These, during these days, you would have seen the mist. See, they don't mix completely with each other. You can see the difference between clouds and fog. Then starch, gelatin, rubber, proteins, blood is a colloid. We say coagulant colloid. Soil is also a colloid. So that is soil colloid. Next, coming to uh, what is crystalloid? You might have heard the term crystalloid. Colloid and crystalloid. <clears throat> it is a substance. Crystalloid is a substance. When dissolved, it forms a true solution. See, colloid doesn't form a true solution. Colloid will not completely dissolve. Crystalloid is a substance that, when dissolved, forms a true solution and it is able to pass through the semi permeable membrane. And these crystalloids get separated from colloids during a process called as dialysis. So, crystalloids are defined as the rapidly diffusing substances, mostly crystalline in nature in the solid state. So that is crystalloid. You should know the difference between a colloid and a crystalloid. See, a colloid has two phase system. Dispersed phase, dispersed medium. Whereas a crystalloid is a true solution where the substances get diffused rapidly and is crystalline in nature. That is colloid in state. Example of colloids Already I told you, then starch and protein is a colloid. But sometimes, Thank you.